And thank you so much, Dr. Gupta, for this uh, brief introduction. And I'm really thrilled and excited to be here at the OcuCon, which focuses on the workplace health and um, safety. So um, today we are going to discuss regarding the risk factors and the need for vaccination in the working adults. And this is my disclaimer slide. And I'm going to focus on why do we need vaccinations? What are the various vaccine preventable infections? What, do we, uh, what, is the, what are the pneumococcal infections? What are the risk factors which are associated with these infections? And what are the type of vaccines which we can use for preventing these infections? So why do we need to focus on vaccinations? So as we know, in this scenario, in this COVID-19, besides COVID-19, there are so many infections which have been on a rise. And for treating infections, we commonly use antibiotics. But antibiotics for long have been the bedrock of modern medicine, but today they have been completely beaten by bacteria. And we face antibiotic resistance as a huge global threat. And it is estimated that probably deaths attributable to infections and antimicrobial resistance are projected to be 10 million by 2050, which is going to be much more than any other illness, maybe even cancer or even road traffic accidents. So it's very important for all of us to prevent infections and adult vaccination is the way forward. So what are the various vaccine preventable infections? So besides COVID-19, there are several infections which can be prevented and which includes the pneumococcal infections, the influenza and the COVID-19. We also can prevent hepatitis B, which is again not curable like HIV infection and can result in chronic liver disease. And also there are other infections like the list which I have here, which includes tetanus, diphtheria, pertussis, typhoid vaccination, varicella, zoster vaccination is also going to arrive. Then we have MMR vaccine, which is for prevention of infections for women, especially in the working population. Then we have meningococcal vaccines for young adults, hepatitis A vaccine, yellow fever, which is the travel related vaccine and a few others. We're going to focus today on the pneumococcal vaccines. And before this, I'm going to describe a little about what is pneumococcal infection, what is the spectrum burden, and what is the mortality associated with the pneumococcal diseases. So when we talk about pneumococcal diseases, that's caused by the bacteria which is gram-positive pneumococcus. And it results in two types of spectrums, predominantly classified as non-invasive pneumococcal disease, which includes pneumonia, sinusitis and ear infections and the other one is the invasive pneumococcal disease which goes which is because of the bloodstream associated infection because of the pneumococci which is which can result in meningitis and other complicated infections which can cause damage to the heart as well so here Normally, we have 60% um, of the individuals in the community carry the pneumococcal disease in their nasopharynx, but not all of them produce or uh, result in infections. It's only when the immunity goes down, that's when there will be infections related to pneumonia, otitis media, which is the ear infection, and later on, also, if it is more severe in patients who have got more comorbidities, like diabetes, etc., that will result in bacteremia, meningitis, and of course, complications related to the heart. So when we look at the etiology of community-acquired pneumonia across whether it is a patient who's coming in the OPD, or it's a hospitalized patient who's in the non-ICU, or in the ICU. So the streptococcus pneumonia is the most common cause of infection across all the type of patients who present to us. And that is why the focus today is on shield against the pneumococcal infections. When we look at the various studies, there have been several studies have been done across various centers in India, and they also suggest that close to 40% of the infections on pneumonia is because of streptococcus pneumoniae, and then there are other etiologies which come into the picture. When we look at the global burden of pneumococcal disease in the adult population, it is mentioned that yes, majority of the infections, pneumococcal infections happen in the elderly population. But if you look here still, 
between 30 to 60 age group as well, there is a significant number of people who develop pneumococcal infections. It can be sinusitis, it, or it can also be um, otitis media, or pneumonia, or the invasive pneumococcal diseases. It is associated with a significant fatality rate as well, and this is a study which was done in CMC Velour and across other six centers over a 15-year period, and this found that the most common cause of pneumonia was against streptococcus pneumoniae, and it had a very high mortality of close to 25 to 30 percent, which is significant, and that definitely if a person gets affected, it will result in uh, loss of uh, work, I mean, going to the office and workplace as well. Now, when a person gets pneumonia, it also affects, uh, there are certain, uh, certain complications related to the heart as well. So there is higher risk of MI, arrhythmias, as well as the heart failure, which can happen. Coming to the risk factors, as I mentioned, that it's not like all people who are going to develop this infection, but what are the risk factors associated with the pneumococcal infections? And when we look at it, it is basically related to any defect in the antibody. So if there is a person who has, suppose, multiple myeloma or blood cancers or HIV infection, immunocompromised patients, defect in the neutrophils, diabetes, alcohol, chronic liver diseases, chronic renal diseases, then these are the people, again, who are at a high risk, and certain prior respiratory infections. If there's a prior influenza, and a lot of us do develop viral infections, so following viral infection, again, there is a higher risk of pneumococcal infections and other inflammatory conditions. For example, there is risk of smoking, asthma, COPD or chronic lung disorders, that will also predispose to the pneumococcal infections. So in today's, uh, when we're talking about related to the occucord, it is predominantly related to people who have diabetes. And also, if you look at it, India is the diabetic capital of the world with so many people affected with diabetes. In fact, 40, close to 44 million people do not know their underlying diabetic status. Coming to smoking, Again, India has a huge share in the smoking, uh, in the world smokers as well, contributing close to 10%. And these are one of the two major uh, contributors, I think, uh, related uh, risk factors for development of pneumococcal infections. Coming to the type of vaccines, the evolu there has been an evolution in the pneumococcal vaccines. Earlier there was a polysaccharide vaccine, but now we are using conjugate vaccines for prevention of pneumococcal infections, and that is predominantly because it is associated with a T-cell dependent immunological memory, which means that the antibody produced is going to be strong, robust, as well as longer lasting. It also decreases the nasopharyngeal carriage and also the antibodies are having high avidity. It also covers the serotypes which are commonly associated with the pneumococcal infections. There have been certain landmark trials related to the PCV13 in adults, and we have this Capita study as well as the lewis Miles study which have been done, and they have shown that there is a significant decrease in the community-acquired pneumonia by 45%, as well as in the invasive pneumococcal diseases by close to 75% with the use of the conjugate vaccine. Again, there is this particular study which was done regarding the efficacy of the pneumococcal conjugate vaccine for, uh, uh, against hospitalization for the community-acquired pneumonia, and it showed a significant decrease of 73%. So this is, uh, this is one of the charts which we have been using in our center for the vaccinations, and it elaborates the vaccination along with the comorbidities, which is mentioned here. So suppose there is a patient who is diabetic and has got CKD, then he is likely to at a higher risk for pneumococcal infections and get the vaccines against pneumonia as well as the other infections as well. So with this, I summarize with this quote from Goethe, which says that knowing is not enough, we must apply, and willing is not enough, we must do it. So thank you so much. Don't waste, just vaccinate.